bed. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the 20 Microns Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Ventura Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Tushar from Ventura Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, Tushar. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ventura Securities Limited, I welcome you all to 20 Micron Limited Q4 and SI24 earnings conference call. The company is today represented by Mr. Asil Paris, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Paris for his opening remarks. Both ways, we can start question and answer session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Atil, sir, please go ahead, sir. Hello. 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 Namanza, yes, sir, please go. Atil, sir, is disconnected? No, sir, he's there in the call, sir. Okay. Okay. I'll disconnect him and connect him back. I'm not able to hear. So, actually, we are not able to hear him, right? So, if you can get him back on the line. Sure, sure. sir. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. you are requested to stay online while the management team is connected back to the call. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to stay online while the management team is connected back to the call.
Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the management team back to the call. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hello everyone. Sorry for the disconnection and the inconvenience caused. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to the FY24 Earnings Conference Call of 20 Microns Limited. 20 Microns Limited is a pioneering and a leading industrial mineral company with a rich experience spanning across three decades. We are the front runners in revolutionizing the micronization of various industrial minerals with a systematic approach in India. The product range includes an array of non metallic industrial minerals such as calcium carbonate, talc, kaolin, mica, cord, dolomite, natural red oxide, and many specialty chemicals and functional additives like mineral based fertilizers, construction chemicals, and many more. With nine state of the art manufacturing facilities and warehouses across India, including Gujarat, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, and Andhra Pradesh, we have a collective manufacturing capacity of more than 450,000 metric tons per annum. Additionally, we also operate five captive mines in India, collectively holding a total mining reserve of approximately 170 lakh million tons. Our products are used as building blocks in various industries like paint, plastics, rubber, paper, ceramics, tires, and many more. Currently, we serve a wide ranging customer base across the world, including 65 plus international countries. We proudly cater to more than 200 plus clients representing a wide area of industries, which include well established companies like Burj Pain, Asian Pain, Kansai Inerolag, Ujaria, Edelite, LNT, Fenelex, ONGC, JK Tires, ExxonMobil, and many more. One of the key drivers of your future success is our unwavering commitment to research and development. We invest heavily in fostering the culture of innovation, constantly pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Our dedicated team of 45, 30 people continuously focusing on innovation by developing a wide range of products in our in-house facility in Barodia. Many microns remain unwavering in its commitment to delivering high quality products and innovative solutions. Through ongoing research and development initiatives and close collaboration with both our international and domestic customers, we continue to enhance our product portfolio, catering to diverse markets. As one of India's leading producers of our refined industrial minerals and specialty chemicals, we are expanding our global footprint and diversifying our product mix. We added 10 plus products in our offerings during the financial year FY24. We are delighted to announce that we have begun supplying our products to many customers in Eastern Europe, Russia, and Italy. Moreover, we have expanded into new territories into many Middle Eastern locations comprising of Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and beyond, and within Southeast Asia and comprising Thailand, Indonesia, Japan, Philippines, and the surrounding region through our distributor partnership. On the JV front, we have recently joined hands with Seaward, which is a German-based company with expertise in construction chemicals and building related materials. Seaward's expertise in construction chemicals perfectly complements the 20 micron core competencies, creating a formidable partnership or to capitalize on emerging opportunities in the global market. By combining Seaward technological products an extensive market reach with our manufacturing excellence and customer-centric approach. We aim to deliver unparalleled solutions to our customers while enhancing shareholder value. In summary, 20 Microns' future looks very bright as we focus on innovation and strategic alliances. We are well prepared to capitalize on the numerous growth prospects that await us and are confident in our ability to expand our operations by providing value to our shareholders. We would like to thank our board, management, our employees, partners, and our shareholders for their unwavering trust. Together, we plan to deliver a solid performance and reliable growth for 20 microns. I thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session if you have a question please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question if you would like to withdraw your request you may do so by pressing star and 1 again i repeat ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad participants are kindly requested to ask two questions in the initial round and you may join the queue for more questions our first question comes from the line of siddhant singh from green portfolio please go ahead sir uh, am, am i audible you are audible sir yes, yeah. sir uh, in a previous phone call you mentioned about ev product development like uh, some ev product is under development so can you provide a more specific timeline for potential commercialization for the product a rough time frame also yeah so we are still uh, those products are still under development we are still working with you know uh, international companies uh, to uh, engage with them in terms of certain technical collaborations for developing certain specific products for the ev battery and the semiconductor industry so uh, it it is still under process and uh, we're not very sure uh, with the timeline for it uh, but uh, we're expecting it to happen sometime towards the end of this financial year okay sir and uh, as you mentioned in your in the short presentation that uh, jsw and uh, grafin has been client of ours so did we receive did we get any contracts from them or what is the position what is the position of the uh, partnership with them like so uh, in terms of both these customers jsw has been our customer for quite a long time now since they entered into the paint business uh, and we are supplying quite a quite a few products to them uh, on a regular basis in terms of uh, grafin uh, who has recently entered into the paint business uh we have uh, in, uh, already started supply into them but since uh you know we don't work on contracts with big customers we work on certain schedules uh of of takes that they commit to us uh, in terms of uh, the product engagement that we have with our customers so uh, we have already started supplying to them and uh uh so now when they grow in terms of their capacities and they uh, build upon their uh you know the, the, the other plans which will uh, start operations uh, in the coming months and years we will continue to supply them but most of our grades have been approved in in, in this particular customer okay thank you sir that's all from my thank side you. and all the best for your uh, upcoming finance year thank you thank you Our next question comes from the line of Rajesh S, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Rajesh, please go ahead, sir. Hello. Uh, am I audible? You are audible, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Couple of questions I have. My first question is that. Uh, i think when you look at the revenues on the bottom line over the past four or five years uh, i see that there is a thing a steady growth uh, in terms of i think the 10% pa here of the top line and uh, while it is good that uh, but it is uh, while it is good that you know the bottom line has not been compromised but you know but uh, i think couple of a few uh, one to give back you are talking about opportunities in terms of import substitution and export opportunities so is there is there some way that you know the growth we can we can see a increased rate of revenue growth uh, because we are starting off with a small base in any case the the revenue growth as of now is just you know little bit just above inflation level so uh, would there be some opportunities where you can see a little more stronger growth in uh, growth of revenue um yeah so uh, answering your question twenty microns always looks at you know uh, significant growth opportunities in various different segments it has to offer uh, but considering the market conditions and considering not compromising on the bottom line is something which is a key factor which plays an important role in the decision making 
of uh, uh, you know not compromising uh, on those aspects uh, while looking at the revenue growth but in the future we definitely see a good opportunity to come up in various different sectors that we cater in uh, for example the paint industry the plastic industry the rubber industry the export markets and various specialty products which have uh, you know seen a good amount of traction uh, but it does take its own time in terms of the conversion so we will hopefully see that in the coming financial year uh, where uh, we would hopefully see a better revenue growth compared to the pvc okay and one other question i had was i think there is this uh, uh, retail segment where you have this you know, construction chemicals and uh, mineral fertilizer so just you know could you throw some you know, some light on that as to how that is growing and you know what is the vision for that because it uh, i mean uh, do you envisage that you know a few years down the line those uh, some of these construction chemicals could, could become popular and could become like household name is that the kind of vision you are envisaging then if, if so then you would require you know different kind of marketing branding focus and you know with a distribution network and sales network So is that is that is 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 it is the is it the that kind of products and branding that you are looking on in the retail segment? So Twenty Micron's focus right now is on product development. So we are at that stage where uh, in both the mineral business and the construction chemicals business of Twenty Micron's, we have tried to create a range to offer to our distribution network where they have you know uh, an expanded uh, uh, product. Uh, available to cater to the market so our first focus was to develop those kind of products for the market since they are already now uh, uh, almost there with that product range available with us uh, where we still have a few more products which we will be adding in this financial year and probably next financial year uh, we will be our focus will be to expand the distribution network pan india we are right now focused on certain smaller states only right now but as and when the capital gets generated and we will be able to spend more money in terms of the branding when the right time arises we will want to become a household name in the future but not immediately we don't want to just jump out there because it's a huge market it's, it's a good pool of different in, uh, you know players out there in that market so we are trying to find our niche in that particular market and we are trying to establish ourselves slowly and steadily to reach and become a household name yeah this is a very quick extension of the same thing so it's a I mean, how many years do you think that you know this construction chemicals could be a significant portion of your business say at least 10% of the revenue or 10 20% I'm sorry I missed your question can you repeat it No my question was in in how many years do you think it would take uh, for this construction chemicals to uh, to form say at least you know about say to 20% of overall revenues is that something well, that still takes time and that is the reason that we have partnered with you know a, a multinational company uh, that I already mentioned in my opening remarks uh, Seawert uh, where we are forming a joint venture where it will be more of bringing the german made construction chemical products here into india and we will be you know uh, together we will be branding that and uh, catering to the indian markets here so uh, we as i mentioned to you 20% is quite a big chunk uh, of the overall revenue to get into this particular segment and so it will definitely take a few more years for us to get there i can't give you an accurate number but uh, definitely we are looking at a few more years but our main focus again uh, remains in terms of uh, getting into better product development for these segments so, okay thank you very much that's all thank you sir our next question comes from the line of jani shah an individual investor please go ahead Yes, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, congratulations for the good product number. Uh, few things uh, taking away from the last phone call, the last interaction you had. You uh, and I think there after the press releases, which was which were mentioning the slowdown in the uh, revenue growth of the business environment and so on. Could you give some? Could you give me some understanding as to how the business You're saying this FY25 is by this percent, 10 to 15 percent. But on a trajectory wise, how do you see the business shaping up over the next uh, year or two uh, in terms of the domestic market as well as on the international market? That is my first question. Uh, 
second, on the margin front, you already indicated there will be some improvement in the margin, possibly in a first very fight. On a steady state basis, I mean, where do you see the margin in this business stabilizing going ahead in the next two years? Uh, and, and, and the third one from my side is on the capital side. I mean, you are reduce your your net debt is on a on a continuous reduction now it's it's a point at which uh, you are generating a free cash flow uh you give some of this understanding as to how do you uh want to uh then uh, how, how do you plan to serve the equity uh by way of dividend or uh, or the by rights or what kind of a plan do you have for your free cash flows thank you sir yeah, um, thank you for your question. Uh, the first question addressing the market conditions that you have mentioned domestically and internationally. Uh, the markets still are quite uncertain. I think we are currently in, in the, the election phase and with the new government being, uh, you know, uh, uh, shaping up their visions in, in the coming months. I think we would see an, a good economic climate, which is expected from the from the trade and from the different market segments that we are operating in. Uh, so I think there's a fair amount of growth that we are expecting from the market segments that we are currently catering and with the discussions that we are having with our current uh, customer base in, in the domestic markets. Uh, so we, we definitely see a good share of growth happening in these sectors. Definitely we will be catering to that growth with the products that we already have and with the product we are planning to develop in the coming months and which we have already developed in the last financial year and which will be commercializing in the coming financial year. So definitely we see a good growth opportunity out there with new players coming in different segments that we are operating in, be it you know, paints, be it paper, be it plastics, be it rubber or ceramics, all these different segments. But we are uh, quite cautious as well to see how this uh, growth is going to be uh, continuous or is it going to, uh, going to be like uh, uh, fluctual is something that we will need to uh, monitor on a regular basis. Looking at the international markets, our focus has shifted from uh, you know the US, the North American markets and from the Western European markets more towards the Middle Eastern markets, towards the South Asian markets and the Far East markets and the Latin American market. So these are the areas where we are going to be focusing more on because these are the growth uh, opportunity countries which we uh, are seeing quite some traction in and uh, there uh, uh, the product acceptance and uh, somewhat the, the freights are also kind of helping us out in terms of getting some market developments and market shares out there. So these are the areas we will be focusing on in the coming months. Uh, second question you said about the margins. Now, when we look at the margins, we definitely have seen uh, margin growth compared to the last financial year and this financial year. Uh, but uh, when you look at the range that we have to offer in terms of the product portfolio uh, that we are in and in terms of one of the product groups uh, dominating the other product groups, uh, the entire range from 13% to 15% is the standard industry range where we continue to be a part of, uh, and this will continue to be the same uh, within this particular span of uh, EBITDA margins that we are discussing, uh, because the product uh, weightage or the product group uh, would continue to remain the same, and the volume buildup which will happen will also continue to remain the same in terms of the product group breakup that I've been talking about. So overall, if you look at it, it will continue to remain in this particular margin space. Uh, the third question that you ask about what we plan to do with the that free cash flow that we have, definitely we have already announced uh, a dividend of uh, 25% this uh, uh, you know in the last board meeting uh, last week uh, for the shareholders. So that is one aspect that we have considered uh, to reward our shareholders. In the second uh, aspect, we plan to uh, do a certain amount of capex. Uh, also for uh, the subsequent financial year, that is the next financial year, where we will start uh, building up on certain capacities for certain products within this financial year so that we can you know, get benefits out of it in the next financial year. And that is where we will be utilizing some of the cash flows uh, also 
So yeah, that's that's it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just a little follow-up. Uh, how much was the export uh, revenue? You know? in oh, oh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, sir. So I request you to come back in the queue for more questions. Sure, sir. Sure, I'll come back. Sure, sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to restrict with two questions in the initial round, and you may join the queue for more questions. Our next question comes from the line of Pritesh Chedda from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, from your presentation slide 12, so in your total revenue, how much is industrial minerals and how much is functional additives? My guess is functional additives is a more value add that you do on your a uh, micronized uh, mineral portfolio. That's right. So about 20% comes from our value-added products and about 80% okay. comes from our industrial minerals. Okay. And when you say micronized, I'm assuming basically it means uh, the, the microns or the thickness, the finer, the finer, that's how you, you refer to micronized, right? Yes. So okay. we have a range of micronized minerals, and then we have a range of sub-micronized minerals, and then we have a range of nano-sized minerals as well. So it's, okay. it's different product groups that we operate in. And the 770 crores revenue which you reported this year, how much does it translate into volume? In terms of quantity? Yes. That's about 450,000 metric tons. And uh, how much volume growth actually you landed up doing in 24? So we had about 14% volume growth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, sir, my uh, last question is, at 450,000 tons, what will be the market share that you have? So the market share is a quite tricky question to, uh, you know, uh, uh, I would say answer upon uh, because uh, – the market that we operate in, we only consider ourselves in the products that we are and the segments that we operate out of. Now, when you the, the segments that we don't operate out, the very, very commoditized segments, which we are not a part of, we don't consider them into the market size. So it's quite a broad area to kind of refer to. So to be very honest, we don't have a specific answer to that particular question. Okay, let's say from a Pareto yeah. principle perspective, uh, in the industrial yeah. mineral, which would be a yeah. core mineral? Core mineral, so about 50% of our uh, yeah, so 50 of our revenue comes from calcium carbonate. And in that, what will be your market share? Again, that's a very broad, broad okay. thing. Uh, so again, okay. we have a lot of imported people. We have a lot of domestic players. We have we we have a lot of segments we don't cover in calcium carbonate because they're very very commoditized. Uh, you know, so so again, it's it's kind of uh, very difficult to say uh, for, uh, in in that case. So yeah. and lastly, the three mines that you have, how much does it supply to your requirements of uh, the raw materials? Yeah, so uh, right now we are operating the Keolin mines, uh, and the remaining okay. of all the uh, mines we are, uh, you know, not not uh, you know, we are, it, it's not fully operational right now. So uh, we are uh, currently using about 50% of our mining material in-house and 50% we are procuring from outside. For kaolin only? Yes. yes. And kaolin will be one portion of your revenue, just like calcium yes, carbonate? About 20, yes, about 20% 20, 20 of our okay. revenue. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from the line of Sanjeev Damani from SKD Consulting. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, uh, uh, sir. Uh, uh, you have put an excellent uh, 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 result, and uh, we really uh, appreciate from bottom of our heart your effort, you know, uh, to take this company to newer heights. Uh, am I audible? Yes, so I can. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, did we notice any impact on our cost because of some red sea issues? Uh, as to freight and container rent, etc., for our imports? Um, yes, to be very honest, we have been facing a lot many issues since December, uh, not only pertaining to the Red Sea. The Red Sea is just one of the factors uh, which had kind of led uh, the hike in the freights for our uh, export markets, for especially the European markets and the Middle Eastern markets that we were catering to. 
Uh, but the main impact we have been seeing is quite recent where uh, there's a shortage of containers uh, and uh, there's a shortage of vessels and there's been a rerouting of vessels which are being doing, which are happening. Uh, so there's there's quite uh, again uh, the the COVID type scenario which was there in the shipping and the uh, the supply chain industry right now, and because of that we are seeing some impact happening. Uh, so yes, it's it's definitely a part of the overall uh, cost structure that we operate in. So could we pass out uh, all these cost factors to our customers, or are we suffering financially or? Some reflection of it will come in this year, or how uh, should we see it? So again, it's a case-to-case -case basis. So uh, when it comes to the exports, definitely we see a good uh, support from our customers, where they know that you know certain uh, key areas are being impacted, and they support us with the kind of uh, pricing that we require for uh, you know those particular orders for a temporary phase till these situations arise. But uh, when it comes to imports, yes, it kind of is, is something that is an ongoing basis. And it's difficult to make a call as to how it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, happen in the, in the coming months. So it's, it's difficult to judge uh, at this point of time. So what happens is that we try to move away from the container business and we try to do bulk shipments where we have good freights in hand. And we have, uh, you know, opportunities where we can save on the freight cost. So we work on those models at that point of time, uh, like we did in COVID times also. Uh, so right now we are working on those scenarios as well. Uh, sir, one request, if we can in presentation mention the tonnages that we imported during the year and the uh, uh, dispatches that we made in terms of tonnages and the closing balance of our inventory in tonnages uh, may not be, you know, item wise, but maybe yeah. a gross tonnage. So because you know a lot of secrecy matters may be there, but you yeah. know that would give us a, a idea to assess you know how our volumes are going up and that way, sir. So right. uh, thank, right. you right. sir. Sure. thank you very thank much, sir. Thank you very much for your Thank you, sir. We have a follow-up question from Jani Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you for being more opportunity. Uh, on the export front, sir, how much was the revenue we had in FY24 and uh, was there a growth uh, that we reported for the, for the year in that segment? So if you look at the overall uh, export, uh, about 15% gets contributed from the export market uh, from our overall revenue. Now, when you look at year on year, uh, the value uh, would seem quite less. It's about a five percent, uh, five to seven percent growth that you'll see on the uh, overall value because uh, some of the freights and some of the seg sectors which we were catering to they have kind of uh, changed, uh, and because of that, our overall CIF value that we work on that has kind of uh, gone down, and because of that. But if you look at the FOB value, the X works value, uh, there we have seen a significant growth of about uh, eighteen to twenty percent. So how do we, uh, like, given the efforts and the, uh, the new customer edition that you plan to have, what kind yeah. of a sustained growth rate do you expect in exports uh, in the next couple of years? Uh, can you just give some understanding of that? So exports will continue to grow in, in, at the rate it's growing right now. So again, it's very dependent upon the world economy. So we have been doing business with certain economies which have now closed down due to certain you know issues which are happening in the world. So it's difficult to make a judgment based on that how how it's going to you know go be the way forward. But yes, if you look at the Asian markets that we are predominantly heavily depending on, we see quite a decent amount of growth happening there uh, uh, in in the range uh, which we are already doing right now. So that is where our concentration basically is. And in some parts of Europe where we are already, you know, uh, having partners and uh, stable distributors for a very, very long time, and they have been cooperative enough to, you know, ha uh, hold hands with us for quite a while now, due, despite a lot of irregularities and uncertainties in the markets there. So I think, yes, uh, we will continue to see uh, quite a decent growth there. Okay. Uh, and maybe just one well a little bit more on the guidance you have given about 10 to 15% growth. Uh, 
uh, I mean, paint industry, which is a dominant uh, sale in our user base or the client base, uh, 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 there we have seen a volume growth being tapering down a bit, uh, although the new competition is still coming in. How do you, uh, how do we build up to that 10 to 15 percent uh, growth uh, for 35? Uh, if you can just give your understanding if you are uh, with the markets that are going to evolve in the next year, that will be helpful. The paint industry is just one segment that we are, uh, you know, focused on, and it's just a wide range of products that we offer to this particular industry. So definitely, if we are seeing kind of, uh, I wouldn't say a degrowth, but a slower growth in the paint industry right now, it's a temporary phase because the paint industry typically works on a per capita growth that they see in terms of the volume building in in, in the nation. So I think there is a lot of room for growth. It's just a temporary phase where they are kind of in, in a bit of struggle phase because of a lot of competition coming into their area. But uh, this is this financial year will be the year to see how everyone kind of gets you know placed uh, within this entire uh, new set of players coming in and how they are getting positioned is going to be something to be looking forward to. And then we will have a more clarity on how this industry is kind of going to move forward in the coming years uh, ahead. But I think this financial year, uh, we don't see much of an issue uh, in, in this particular segment. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, uh, answering on the question. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. And please wait for your turn to ask the question. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Our next question comes from the line of Kevin Shah from Seven Island PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, just uh, one small question from my side that uh, whether we are planning to commence uh, any more mining operations in India, you know, looking at the favorable mining conditions in the country currently. Yeah, so 20 microns constantly evaluates a lot of mining options here in India, depending upon the quality of the material which is available uh, in various pockets of the country and uh, for certain products it operates in. Uh, so it's an ongoing process which keeps happening and uh, if something suitable comes up in, in, in a certain uh, decent valuation, then definitely 20 microns will look at those options in India and internationally as well. So we keep an eye on both, uh, uh, you know, both uh, areas. Okay, yeah, fine. That is from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from Rushal Chopra from RV Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Congratulations very much uh, for the good sets of numbers and a consistent, a consistent performance. Uh, so my question is that you've mentioned in your PPT that uh, we are being, we have been greatly benefiting from the China Plus One strategy that is being adopted by the world throughout the globe. So uh, what would be the possible effects of this strategy that uh, you know, we are looking and banking on uh, in the future. So can you explain me some aspects of this, please? So uh, right now, uh, majority of the minerals that we are currently uh, producing here in India, uh, China also has similar kind of uh, minerals available with them. Now when we look at the, uh, you know, the Indian markets and the export markets, uh, many of our customers who were dependent upon certain imports of Chinese goods, uh, they have moved to, uh, you know, uh, Indian products uh, or they have moved to uh, some other products because of mm -hmm. certain reduced dependency upon the Chinese products, be it, you know, uh, the, the trust factor or be it the logistic issues or be it the pricing related issues. Uh, so that has kind of had an added advantage that we have started to see. I would say it has been completely out there, 
but we have started to see that change from our Indian customers and from some of our Latin American customers and some of our Middle Eastern customers. So that uh, thing we have already started to see in the last few months, and we hope that we can continue to, you know, uh, try to transform our products in such a way that we kind of develop an edge over certain Chinese products that are out there in the market and we are kind of competing with because with now America and Europe creating an anti-dumping charge on certain Chinese products, there is a possibility that Chinese products might get dumped into other Asian markets. Uh, uh, and uh, so we have to get ready for that in the coming future. So, and uh, we, that is the reason that we are gearing up to uh, have better products than the Chinese products in, in most of the customers that we cater to. Uh, so, sir, uh, if, if possible, can you give, uh, give us a clarification on what is the supply pro proportion of the Chinese suppliers uh, for our uh, buyers? Uh, the participation of Chinese supplies? It depends, it depends from product to product. So, for example, in Kaolin, there is certain there are certain customers which use you know uh, products from Chinese manufacturers in terms of precipitated barium sulfate. There are certain there is a, there's a wide variety of traders and uh, customers who use uh, their products. Uh, then there is certain uh, you know uh, specialty products which we manufacture where. Uh, there is a predominance of uh, Chinese products coming into India. Uh, so right now there's a huge amount of titanium dioxide which is coming in from China for all these years. That's where we, you know, pitch in some of our replacement products into the pipeline and try to get some market share uh, for those kind of products. It's, it's a wide range of different products we are talking about here. It's not related to only one or two products uh, from the product range. And if you need more information, we can have a one-on-one -on -one call, and I can yeah. tell you more about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, one more question to follow up on this, sir. Uh, whether are we having, uh, are we envisaging any incentives uh, from the government of India for import substitutions from China, and which would be promoting the Atmanirbhar Bharat or made mm -hmm. some serious schemes like that? No, no, no. There is nothing being worked upon right now with these kind of schemes from the government. But in case in the near future, if there's any kind of an anti-dumping duty being levied upon for certain kind of products, which we which we don't know if the government's going to get into, but if that happens, then definitely uh, uh, it could uh, maybe benefit 20 microns to some extent. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Our next question comes from the line of Darshan Chandra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So in the last con call you said regarding the debt uh, is going to reduce by 20 odd crores. But in the balance sheet, uh, it's uh, increased by 20 crores. Uh, so there may be some effect on the interest cost also getting higher in this financial year. Can you throw some light on this? Uh, can you, uh, can you yeah, answer so this? Uh, in this net debt, so if you look about net debt and if you consider KSL bond balance, net debt is reduced by uh, around 20 crores. Total, total borrowing is 115 crores, which is 109 crores. And, and if you give up KSL bond balance, it is 60 crore. So if you reject cash and net balance, net debt is come to 55 crore. And uh, it is oh. it, at point 23, it is 71 crore. So there is a significant, around 23% of the reduction in net debt position. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a follow up question from Sanjeev Damani from SKD Consulting. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir, we, uh, can I know the absolute uh, uh, export figure for the last financial year? How much uh, money, I mean, how much is the turnover in export? We are at 95 crores. 95. And sir, uh, most of the product that we export, are they? Uh, indigenously procured and made, or we have to import uh, certain things, process, and then export it? No, no, no. For all the export materials, they are all uh, based upon Indian raw materials. 
okay and sir uh, yeah. i mean uh, some significant acquisition of minds if you have uh, in mind right now or in coming days i mean can you just give us a direction that which kind of minds we are uh, looking to acquire uh it's too early for me to tell that but we have identified few potential sources uh in india and internationally and uh, so since uh, a lot of groundwork is being done to evaluate the quality of the mines and the quality of the material which originates there uh so these are related to you know uh, calcium carbonate these are related to clays these are related to uh, talcs so many many different minerals we are trying to identify new potential sources so when the right time comes we will definitely announce uh, for uh, these kind of uh, uh, clarifications a lot of new corporates are entering paint industry and we are a very dependable supplier to many of them and are likely to be for all newcomers so will it require us to raise funds for working capital needs or uh, uh, inventory needs in coming uh, are we, we already no for even for the future i think we are already uh, at a comfortable level in terms of the working capital that we are at so we will not be uh, we will not be needing more additional funds to manage the working capital cycle but yes to increase our capacities we will need to we will not need to borrow but through our internal accruals only we will be doing the capex in the next couple of years ha uh, so something of uh, right or etc can come private placement or some right can be on time. we have not thought of it as of now but maybe in the future okay. which it might be a scenario we are not sure yeah thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir that was the last question now i hand over the call to the management for closing comments i thank all the participants for attending this session we believe that we have satisfactorily uh, run you through our company and financials and address every arising questions there on put up on the floor by the participants we continue to see growth in our broad product portfolio and witness a strong momentum across our business supported by r&d and other strategic initiatives we remain focused on bringing new products exploring new markets and creating value for all our stakeholders please follow up with investor relations team krunal shah namon maheshwari at captive ir if you have any further questions which weren't covered in this session and hope you have a great day ahead thank you once again thank you members of the management ladies and gentlemen on behalf of ventura securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may all disconnect your lines now thank you your conference is no longer being recorded thank you thank you everyone